Today I'm going to show you how to create this procedural bokeh pattern. The pattern is highly customizable, but the placement of the shapes is for the most part random. The node tree does look a little complicated, but it is a lot of repetition, which we can just copy and paste. Also, if you like what I do, I encourage you to check out my Gumroad and Patreon and consider supporting me there. Although I show you how you can create everything in these videos, the support I receive from texture purchases and patron support helps me allocate more time to provide these free tutorials. To set up our scene, I'm going to get rid of this cube and bring in a plane. I'm going to change the whole middle area to my shader editor from the top right to my 3D viewport. While I'm hovered over the shader editor, just hit N to get rid of that shelf on the right. Let's put that same material that was on our cube onto our plane. Uh, we can do this in Cycles or Eevee. In Eevee, you get the nice bloom effect if you turn that on. Uh, doesn't really matter. I'll just do it in Eevee. I'm going to bring in a Voronoi node. So just go ahead and hit Shift A and then search for that guy. And while it's highlighted, hit Control T. That brings up the texture coordinate and mapping nodes here. And we're just going to be coming out of object. So just make sure that's hooked up correctly. I'm going to get the viewer node going by holding down Control and Shift and left clicking on this Voronoi node. And in the top right, just hold down Z. Move your mouse up so we're in rendered mode. We can see the Voronoi pattern here on our right. I'm going to change this to 4D, and I'm going to change the scale to uh, 2, so it's a little larger. So this uh, bokeh effect, it's got kind of those circles there. So I wanted to start by creating those. I'm going to bring in a color ramp, and you can see if I turn this white down, this black up a little bit, it creates these circles. Uh, I don't want this gradient because I want this to be a mask, so I'm just going to leave the black at the bottom, change this to constant interpolation, and then put the white at point 0.2. So the circles are quite small. The reason I keep this at point 0.2 is because if I turn this up, they start to push into each other, and I don't want them to. Uh, it doesn't create the right kind of overlap I'm looking for. So I'm just going to leave it at point 0.2 for now. Let's get rid of this principled BSDF. We're not really going to be using it. Uh, and I'm going to bring in a mix RGB. Place that right here. And this is actually going to be going into the factor. And so basically, if we want, we can create any uh, color of circle we want and any color of background we want. I want to leave this background just as white. And uh, this color here, I actually want to get this information here coming out of these color cells. So if we plug this in, uh, we get basically a different color for each circle, just randomly coming from this information here. I'm going to bring in an emission shader and just place it after this mix and just make sure this is going into the surface area. You can get rid of that viewer. Uh, if we click on Bloom under the Render Properties here, we can see this glowing effect, especially if we turn this up. But the problem is that this whole object is lit up. We only want to light up these circles here. To do that, I'm going to create another mask and feed it into this strength here that basically tells uh, this uh, mesh here just to apply the emission to these areas. So I'm going to duplicate this color ramp, and let's just uh, reset it. I'm going to turn this down so it's not so distracting in the meantime. Uh, we're going to set up four points here, and we're going to kind of fine-tune it, but let's set up the values first. So this bottom one, we are going to go in here, just go to the hex value. We're going to go 7B, 7B, 7B. So it's uh, pretty close to a middle gray color. The second one here, we'll just change this to white, so all Fs. This third one, we'll change this to E2, E2, E2. And this fourth one, we'll just change to black. And uh, we'll see in a sec where we need these to go, but they're kind of going to be in this area down on the lower end. Now I'm going to plug this color into the strength on the emission shader, and I'm going to amplify the effect a little bit as well with a math note. I'll just place this here and open this up and hit M to change it to multiply. I need to change this value to 30, so we get a, a bit of a higher emission value there. So then I'm going to scrunch these together a bit, and especially bring that black down because we want it to rest basically on the end there, um, right where uh, the black meets the color, or at least close enough, you know. I'm going to drag this and hold shift while I do to fine tune it a little bit. Maybe 0.197 looks pretty good. And then what I'm doing here with these other ones is I'm just kind of creating a gradient with the light. You know, the gray in the middle. And then these whites are going to be different strengths for that emission, you know. So if you play around with this, you can see that value changing a little bit. I like the look of this here. And I'm also going to check this bloom here under the render properties, which is available in Eevee. And that creates this glowing effect. I'm going to search for a noise texture and just place it right after this texture coordinate node. 
you can see the noise texture is having quite a bit of influence and I'd like to back that off a little bit. So I'm going to bring in a mix RGB, place it right here and run object into color two. Then I'm going to change the scale to 400. So it's way higher and you can kind of see it creates this interesting um, granular look. And I want the influence to be much less. Even if I put it up to 0.99, it's still not enough. So I thought 0.999 looked a little bit better. But you can kind of see the effect I'm going for there. It's just this kind of blurriness on the outside. Maybe even 0.995 compromise. Something like that. You know, just do it uh, whatever you think. Um, I'm just kind of fine-tuning it based on what I like. I like this, 0.998. That looks pretty good. When we... Um, blow these up a little bit, we can see that these colors come together, but uh, they don't really overlap in the right way. You know, this is uh, the gray one here, and this is a blue one here. They should kind of be overlapping, and this should be like gray plus blue. It's not really working out that way. So I'm just going to go back, control Z a couple times, and I'm just going to duplicate a bunch of nodes and overlay them on each other. So uh, what I'm going to do is basically grab all of these nodes here and just control shift D so that they duplicate while remaining attached to this mix RGB right here. I can even make an incision uh, as well to keep it a little bit neater. Move these over here. Then I'm going to mix these two emission shaders together by holding down control shift and right clicking and dragging from one node to the other. And it just creates this mix shader uh, with 0.5 being the factor. That's fine. I'm going to just leave it like that. We could move this one to be distinct from the other one just using these X and Y values, but it's the same pattern just moved around. Uh, it doesn't really look distinct. We need a new seed, which we can either get by hitting this Z value here or this W value. It does a really similar thing. So just basically uh, adjust these values till you get something like, there's going to be a lot of different combinations. So just flip through a few. And if you don't like the pattern that it's creating here too, like let's say you don't like this darker circle in the middle. That is this gray value right here. So maybe turn this down a little bit. Oh, that's the white value. Turn this down a little bit. Or uh, maybe turn this up so it's more of a gradient. W whatever you like the look of, really. Let's grab all of these nodes here. And I'm just going to move them up a little bit. And then Control-Shift-D to duplicate them again while leaving them attached to this point here. Move this over a little bit. And then I'm going to do that same mix, which is Control-Shift, right-click and drag from one node to the other. We've got this uh, mix shader there, and then we just need to adjust these a little bit, adjust that Z value to get some unique patterns here. And I'll do the same for this one here. We can really just drag this across and, you know, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Just till we get something we like. I'm going to do this one more time. So we have a total of eight different strands. I didn't need to grab that reroute point. So I'm just going to grab all this Control-Shift-D to duplicate it. Uh, move that over there, maybe a little bit just to make it nicer to look at. And let's mix these together. Then we just have to change these down here. I'm going to grab this W. Let me grab these guys. That Z there. I'm just kind of going quickly. Not the scale. Didn't mean to change that. Just kind of going quickly to get through this here. But you can fine tune this, you know, get something you really like. Sometimes you'll get some really pleasing combinations there. I'm just going to change this a little bit too. Move that down. This guy here. Okay, that's looking pretty good. You could keep going if you want, uh, make more of these, but I'm pretty happy with eight different branches. And I do want to do some tiny ones as well. So that means two more of these. Going to do that same mix trick again with Control Shift, right click, and drag across. Uh, but I am going to change these scales on these two here. For this top one, I'm going to change it to 40. And for this bottom one, I'm going to change this to 10. So let's just look at these two here. We can see they're much smaller. We probably don't even need to adjust anything. Let's just mix them right together with uh, this other one. Actually, let's zoom in and make sure they still look OK. You can see the noise texture is affecting these ones a little bit more. I like the look of it. I'm fine with it. But sometimes you will need to adjust these color ramps if you change the scale. I think mine looks fine. So let's just mix it together with this mix right here. Drag it closer to make it easier. And uh, let's see what it looks like. I adjusted some of these gray values just to remove these harsh centers of these uh, circles there, just by bringing this down a little bit. Um, I like to look at this a little bit better. But here we go. This is our bokeh effect. 
And we can change the strength of everything by adjusting um, these emission shader uh, multiplies here. So let's say we want one much brighter than the others. We could just crank this. This is probably too much at 1,236.9. But uh, you can see the effect anyways. So let's look at a few of the ways we could change this. Uh, we could change from EV to cycles, for instance. It does look fairly similar, uh, but, you know, something to play around with. We could also change some of the values on this color ramp, you know, make the middle less bright by turning this down to a darker gray color or affecting this multiply here to make one set of uh, circles a little bit brighter. We could also come over here to the Voronoi and change this, uh, let's say, to F2 instead. And we'd have to change some stuff here too, like we'd have to bring this up and bring this up. But then we get these, uh, you know, kind of leaf shapes there. I'm just going to undo those two changes. Change this back to F1. We could also change it to Manhattan, uh, Chevy Chev or Minkowski, to get different shapes. You know, Chevy Chev uh, gives us those squares. Let's just see what that looks like. Yeah, there we go. We could also get Minkowski, uh, these kind of diamond shapes. But we'd have to adjust these color ramps here. And even still, I'm still not seeing any. Yeah, there we go. You just got to play around with it sometimes to get the result you want. But uh, that's kind of cool. And we can come over here and change this to like 300 if we wanted. Get those a little brighter. Then you have some diamonds in there as well. Another thing we could do is come over to this mix and noise right before the, uh, or right after, pardon me, the texture coordinate node. Maybe we could change this mix influence here to 0.95. Looks pretty cool. We could also come over here to the scale, maybe change this to 50 or something like that, and maybe bring this down to 0.8 even. It's pretty neat, uh, the different effects you can get on here. You could also come over to the one of the Voronoi nodes and maybe even animate something here, like the scale. You can see when you do this, it creates this cool effect where they're kind of uh, going away from you, disappearing, and getting smaller. You could also come to the mapping node and change any of these. You could animate this X position, for instance, or the Y position, or you could even uh, decrease the scale on a certain axis and make them you know, really skinny or really long. Another thing that you could try is coming to this line right here after this mix RGB and bringing in a mapping node. You place it right here, and this allows you to control all the layers at once. Uh, let's say we change this Y to 20. You know, it's all stretched out. And then let's say we change this uh, mix RGB to 0.8, and then let's change the scale on the noise to 20. You can also set up some custom colors. An easy way to do it would be to duplicate one of these color ramps that are set to constant interpolation. I'm just going to move this second slider to the middle. Then you just set up two colors. I'm just going to go with kind of an orange color and maybe a greenish bluish color there. And now you can see there's just uh, all those small ones are either green or orange, greenish blue or orange. And you can control the amount of each by moving this back and forth. Uh, and you could also duplicate this several times and just put it on any strands that you want to be just those two colors. Okay, that's it. Hope you could see what I was doing and uh, how you might change it around. Make it your own unique creation. Uh, again, as always, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. I'll see what I can do to clear up any confusion you have. Thanks for watching.